right, so I'm going to show you how I introduce a dog to an e-collar. This little guy, Reggie, has never been on an e-collar, not at all, and we're going to do it right now. So I'm going to turn the receiver or the collar part on and turn the transmitter or the remote on. And then I'm going to put it on him. Okay. I think I'll do it out here. Now they're all getting in it. So you can see that this is really long. I'm going to put it on him and cut it. I'm going to mark the hole because that's just too long. So I'm marking the hole. So once I've marked it, I put it back on. I fit this through and I don't want to cut it too short so I always feed it back through because I have actually cut them too short. And I'm going to give it maybe two inches of a tail. And if you ever get a different dog in the future, these, um, these straps, you can just order them from the, from the company. So now we're going to put it back on him. Again, you've heard me talk about it if you watched the first video, that it needs to be tight. You need the stim points to be in there. It needs to be two fingers tight. Two fingers tight. Just like that, two fingers tight. So I've marked the hole you can see there of where it needs to be. I like the light facing towards his face, like so you can see the light by his face versus this way. Make sense? So put it on this way. Good boy. He's wondering what the heck's going on. His world is changing. Tighten it to that hole marked. And then this needs to be it needs to not spin. See how I'm working it from this side, kind of pulling his skin to the other side. Because I want it to have a good fit. There you go. And so you want to rotate it every few hours from this side to this side. You never want it straight in the middle. You want it at either sides where in the human neck you have scalene, so you want it here. not. All right, now he's wearing it. We're going to start at like a one. Nothing. Two. Nothing. Four. Four. I'm going to go with the four. I'm going to start working with the four. Now I'm going to go do some outdoor stuff with him that he's going to be wearing a prong collar and also the e-collar and I'll show you what I do. It's not rocket science. This is what I do. I think he might feel it at a four. That was a four again. And we're going to start with that and it's going to go up or down. You never get stuck on a number so we're going to work at a four. Keep watching. All right, so now we're just going to be layering on e-collar pressure with the leash pressure and the prong collar which he already understands it's been two days of that he knows what it means the prong collar goes away I just use that as um, kind of like a bridge tool to teach him some obedience in a really simple easy direct fine-tuned way and then working on to e-collar and then the prong goes away alright so when my hand is away from my body it means e-collar pressures on and when it drops back down, the e-collar pressure is off. So it's just like I've been doing with all the other dogs. And now he's eating the leash. So I'm going to actually roll up. Oh, he stopped. I was going to roll it up to a 12 and say no. But let's get going on this. If he does something like that again, I'll let you know. So you're going to see both pressures going on. And he will get some rewards in there. So we'll go back to the four place. Down. Yes. And he gets the yes. Good boy. Break. Place. Down. Yes. So I, I'm not using the leash as you can tell. But I'm going to keep it. Nope. Now 
I'm using it down. But I'm going to keep it in my hand in case I need to use it. Nope. Down. Like there. I needed to use it. It's really important to direct. Nope. Down. So I noped him at a four and I said down at a four. What I was about to say, it's really important to keep the leash on. It will undermine what you're trying to do if you take it off too soon. You can't just say, come, 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 with, without this leash to guide him. So if you say come, then you can pick it up and do it again and actually show him. So don't take the leash off too soon. Let's do a come. Come. Sit. Good. Good guy. Break. Let's see if you can do a place. Come. Place. Down. Yes. So he's working out a four. I can tell he feels it. I'm going to go to a three. He's moving a little slower. Totally normal. Break. Place. So here's where I pick up the leash. Down. Yes. Pressure was on that whole time. Clearly he's not ready for it. Nope. I need to use the leash. At least have it. Break. Place. Yes. So he feels it. I'm going to go to a two. I love the way he flies. He's awesome to watch. Break. Place. Down. Yes. Break. Place. Yes. I just snapped them out of the shake, the, the um, scratching. We're at a two. Nope. Good. So the trick really is you need to practice with this a little bit. Good. You need to practice with this a little bit. You need to start playing with it without it being on a dog. Do it in your hand. Do it with a friend in their hand with the leash. You can kind of mimic somebody's a dog that can actually talk to you like, oh, I feel it. And you can see your timing. So what you do is you put the e-collar in a friend's hand. You have them hold a leash in their other hand. And then you try to add both pressures at the same time. And they can actually feel and say, I, you didn't press the button at the same time. So you can try that and you can have them do it to you. Just mess around with it on he some humans at lower levels. And then put it on your, on your guy and layer it with the leash. Apply both pressures at once. Come. Sit. Good. And if they have obedience already, they should have obedience already. You shouldn't really need to use the leash so much. It's more of a tool as a guide. Place. Down. Yes. If I say the word nope, I'll tap the button. Good boy. Yes. All right. So that's it. Like I said, not rocket science. It's pretty workable, pretty doable. Put a comment in the comment section if you have some questions or concerns, and I can answer them for you. Otherwise, have at it. Get yourself an e-collar technologies mini educator and try it. It's not rocket science. It's like driving a car. You don't just go have one lesson and then take the test a week later. That's just not a break. You can get up. And you don't just go take the test a week later. You practice with it a bit. But once you get it, it's pretty darn easy. And then the last bit of information is start in an area that's low distraction. Don't go out to the park or the bike path on day one. Spend some time in your house and then in your yard working at lower numbers. Anywhere from, low is anywhere from a 2 to a 20 really. It depends on the dog. Some like golden retrievers, they can be really high, like an 18 for their lowest level. And then little guys like this, or uber sensitive dogs, they might be lower numbers to start with. But don't get fixated on a number. That's, that's another big point. Don't get fixated on a number. Start in your house, low distractions, lower numbers, 
nail that, get it really good and bomber, put on a longer leash, go to a park, and then try it there. You're going to have to roll up higher because there's going to be dogs passing. And then finally, take it off leash. But build up to it. Set your dog up for success. And be patient with him. Be kind to yourself. You know, you got to go up and down with your e-collar. There's going to be times when you press it too high by accident and your dog's going to say, ah, just don't worry about those moments. It's kind of like if you were to slam the car door accidentally on his tail. That would really hurt and suck, but w what are you going to do? You're going to be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, and then you're going to move on from it. Don't, don't overthink it. Don't worry about it. Just start out low distraction so your dog's successful, and so are you. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section. It's Cheryl, Lead Off Leash Canine Training. Have fun. That guy seems pretty relaxed. Looks good for an afternoon, huh? Reggie. You're a hard worker. Bye.